There is hope for knuckleheads everywhere. I should know. I'm a recovering knucklehead. I have a true story for you today. It's the story of a head of knuckle becoming a heart of gold. It's not my story. This story comes from my best buddy in the whole world. We went through seminary together. We were ordained together. His name was Brian Black, and I lost him 20 years ago this month. Still hurts, but I was with him when he died, and it's up to me to keep his stories alive. So this story is called The Party of the Year, and Brian wrote it and told it to his church that he was serving down in Georgia. And the story goes like this. My father was in town for a brief visit this past week. As always, he brought up stories about me as a kid. It's always heartwarming and lots of fun until he talks about what I was like as a teenager. That's when sweat breaks out on my forehead and my right eye starts to twitch. The way I remember it, I must have been a parent's worst nightmare during my teen years. I was constantly getting caught doing forbidden things that I enjoyed. Seems like every other day I was being grounded for something or other. And the more I got punished, the more I got angry. And the farther away I drifted from my parents. One evening after an especially tense encounter with the parents, I was sent to my room and I was told that I could not go to the big party that night. And I knew this was going to be the best party of the year. Well, about 11 o'clock that night, my parents' day had ended and they were asleep. My day was just beginning. I stuffed my pillows under the covers in the shape of a sleeping teenager. I used a world globe for the head. I crawled out the window onto the roof, tiptoed to the edge, and jumped down onto a brick wall. With one leap over our hedge, I was on my way to the party. About 4 a.m., I found my way home. I climbed up the brick wall, pulled myself up on the roof, tiptoed to the other side, and crawled back in the window. I carefully climbed into my bed, and I began to rearrange the pillows. While I was doing this, I accidentally knocked that globe with my elbow, and the globe began to roll toward the other side of the bed. I flipped over, and I caught it in midair. And then I saw my mother in the other bed staring at me. <laughs> my life passed before my eyes. I knew it was all over. She just lay there looking at me. I could see that she had been crying. Silence. And then she asked softly, where have you been? Just out, I said, and I remember being disappointed with my answer. If I knew I was going to get caught, I would have had a good excuse ready to go. She said, I was worried that something had happened to you. More silence. Then she said, I'm just glad you're home. She got up, she left my room. No more questions, no more discussion, and I don't remember that this incident ever came up again. I do remember lying in my bed after she had gone, looking up at the ceiling, still holding that globe in my hands, and I wondered how long she had been lying there, waiting for me to come home. And why the tears? What was that all about? Somewhere deep down in my soul, I knew that she was not thinking about what a rotten kid I was or how often I had disappointed her. Was she remembering June 4th, 1957, when I was born, when they drank champagne and smoked cigars and they hugged and they laughed and they cried? Was she remembering my first steps, my first word, my first day of school? 
Was she thinking I had run away? Was she thinking I had disappeared from her life forever? Well, I don't really know what happened to me that night, but inch by inch, things started to change in my life and in my fractured relationship with my parents. You know, I think maybe when we come face to face with such compassion and love from someone else, we are never the same person again. Our whole world gets turned inside out and upside down. Our lives are changed by the mysterious, wonderful power of love. You know, as human beings, we do have a tendency to wander. We drift away from the love of God, which is the love given in our creation when heaven and earth and all the angels rejoiced. But even when we do wander away from that love, and we do, God always always welcomes us back again. There is a reason that the most famous verse in the New Testament is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's all about love. The love that holds us no matter what. Well, that's one of Brian's stories. From my own life, I could tell you very similar stories. He was a knucklehead, and so was I. He was loved in spite of that, and so was I. His head of knuckle was slowly changed into a heart of gold, and I hope I am going through that same change. There is hope for knuckleheads and morons and jerks everywhere. We can all be changed into genuinely decent human beings. And it's all because we are loved. Now, I'm not talking about sappy, sentimental Valentine's Day love. I'm talking about being seen honestly as a flawed, selfish knucklehead and being loved in spite of it and through it. That's what God's love is all about. That's what the love of Christ is all about. And you know, that's really what the best human love is all about. And when you have been loved like that, you are never, ever the same Amen.